in 2013, I was in the absolute worst shape of my life. I was morbidly obese, I was unfit, out of shape, and perhaps most importantly, totally and completely exhausted. Not, not just from going up down one flight of stairs, but <laughs> from the countless times that I had made concerted effort to make a change, but let myself down and fell over and over again. And it's not that I'm inherently not motivated. I've always considered myself motivated, even disciplined. So why have I failed? Why did I fail so many times, and why do people normally fail? We've learned through research that all those that actually take the time to set goals for New Year's resolutions, out of 100 different people, eight of them do it. Eight. I don't know if that should give me comfort that I'm you know, not alone, but I've asked myself, what is it about me that was short? Where was I shortchanging myself? You know, and I think what it came down to me is I lacked motivation at times. I could get pumped up. I could say, this is the time when I go to Olive Garden, I'm not going to just stop at one. Or I'm going to stop at one. <laughs> Basket. Okay? But I'm telling you, that buttery, garlicky goodness, that's in me. And, and then it would start to cycle again. I continued to lose trust in myself. And that, that's not unique. The other thing is, is that even when I have goals that are incredibly important to me, I also have a life to live. I can't just take a year off and say, I'm losing weight this year. I had a job, I had responsibilities, I had community service. And with that, I started to really identify what it was that made a difference. And I started my journey of figuring out how I could have substantial change that wouldn't just last a week until that next Saturday night at Olive Garden. <laughs> okay? And through this, I identified some principles that worked. And as I went along without seeking people out, people began to ask me, Reg, what's different? What are you doing? And I'd sit with them and I'd discuss some things. And before I knew it, we kind of began a project. And this project I call the five minutes of courage. Why the five minutes of courage? I found out that it only takes about five minutes of total, complete courage to put together a plan that creates lasting change. Now, let me tell you a little bit about the journey of putting together these results. I first started with individuals who struggled with all types of things. Not all were weight. Not all of them were health-related. I had people come to me with serious obstacles to addiction, to difficulties in marriage, to self-defeating behavior that was making not only their life difficult, but others. And I found that all of them had a couple of things in common. And it was an absolute requirement for me to even join with them in the project. And those two things were, number one, an absolute commitment to honesty and integrity. And number two, a total desire for change. Without one of those two requisites, the project would never begin. So as I began this journey with myself and others, I started tracking my successes and failures, as well as all those in the project. And I want to share with you, before I get into the specifics of how the project works, I want to share with you just a couple of the results. First of all, in this limited data sample, 
I've put together. I've gathered over 7,096 different entries of goals. Now what I mean by this is people either chose to confirm a success every day or admitted to a failure. And if they admitted to nothing at all, it counted as a failure, okay? And of this 7,096, there were 7,065 confirmed successes with only 31 total failures. Lasting change is possible. So let me tell you about the characteristics and the requirements. I mentioned an absolute commitment to honesty, an absolute desire to change. What we did is we sat down together and began to discuss what it was that they wanted to become. We didn't start with goals. We started with, if they looked in the mirror, who did they want to be? What would they do if they had unlimited cognitive abilities to accomplish their tasks or to become who they want to become? And they outlined that on paper. And with that vision of mind and who they wanted to become, they then started to put together what they would do to become that person. What daily, weekly, and monthly activities would fall into place to achieve and come closer to becoming who they wanted to be. And in this, we have a tendency sometimes, and I think one of the reasons we fell is we put together a plan that we can't control. As I stand before you, if I set a goal that I'm going to be a CEO of a Fortune 500 company this year, I'm telling you, it's not in the cards. So we began to talk about what these activities could be that they could track and own. Could they agree to how many pounds they would lose if it was weight related? No. But they could commit to how they ate. If someone was looking and wanting to become more selfless, they could choose how many acts of service they did and performed for others. And so they listed these out. Some of them used a kitchen counter or a fridge with a poster. And some people, and most of those that I work with, have put together an online format that lets others be able to see the goals. With this, once they identified what they wanted, they started tracking it each day. But not just by themselves, they found accountability partners, and preferably more than one. And these accountability partners committed to look and follow up with how their goals were every day. And on top of that, most of the time, it was reciprocated. If I was looking at your goals and verifying with you, every day you commit that you're going to verify with me. And if sometimes that happened with three or four people. So, with that requirement, and with listing that all together, the most important piece of this puzzle in this journey was creating leverage. Leverage against myself. I know me. I happen to know one thing that overrides all others about me, and some of you would confirm this, I'm cheap. <laughs> My wife would confirm. And so I realized, I put together a plan and I said, if I ever fail to meet one of my objectives, I'll shell out cold hard cash to the following individuals. <laughs> I, had, I had one person I've worked with on this project that said, you know what, I love guns. I love gun rights, I love everything about guns, but I've got this addiction that I just haven't been able to kick. So what I'm committing to do is any time that I have a failure, I commit to not only give money, but to give it to the largest anti-gun charity in America. <laughs> Can you imagine how many failures he's recorded? Let me help you out. 
And it's not necessarily money. Um, I've got another individual that I've worked with that hates socializing. When he thinks of pain, he thinks of hosting a party and having people at his house. <laughs> so he set up his plan. He said, look, Reg, if I ever have a confirmed failure, I agree to host a party at the house, to decorate myself, <laughs> and probably the hardest part, to make food from a recipe he finds on Pinterest. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have a Pinterest account. <laughs> so, it's not always money. Throughout this process, what I've learned to find, what I've come to find out is that it wasn't necessarily just about accomplishing the task. Although the success rate is absolutely incredible. Ultimately, it became about working to become something that I wasn't. And someone asked me once, and I get asked occasionally, is this plan naturally based on intrinsic motivation, which we know to be the very strongest form of change, or is it extrinsic? And so I'll ask you, what is it? Here I have a self-appointed plan. I'm laying out who I want to be, I'm laying out what I would do, and I'm laying out the consequences of what would happen if I do it. Am I acting intrinsically? For me, I can answer that as yes. But I'll also say that I have a beautiful extrinsic motivation from being cheap. And 90% of the time, maybe 95% of the time, I'm driven by what I'll become and what I'm becoming. But on those hard days, on those days at the restaurant, it doesn't hurt to have a little extra nudge of remembering cold, hard cash. So I would ask you this, and I want you to ponder this. What would you become if you did what was most important to you every day? I'll tell you what I found. Not only have people reported success in their goals and their original objectives, they've begun to build trust within themselves. Isn't that interesting? All those times that I committed to do something and chose not to or failed, I whittled away my trust. And it got to a point where I realized, after some time had passed, that even if I had a failure on my goals, if I did the consequence that I appointed, I was still maintaining momentum. And it was no longer framed as a failure, per se, because I was still on my way to becoming who I wanted to become. So I'd ask you this, and I'd like to challenge you. If you're in a spot where you're like me, and you wanted to make substantial change, change that mattered and would last, don't simply go through another process of goal setting. Don't spend time looking in the mirror saying, I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and people like me. Take five minutes of courage. Put together the plan and hold yourself to a level of accountability that brings you to becoming who you want to become. Thank you.